I'm delighted to say now we are joined by the Munster head coach and former Ireland international Fiona Hayes. Keith Tracy is in studio with us, Fiona. He's just revealed that the two of you share the same birthday. Oh, it's coming up soon, so. We, we know. Yeah. We know. <laughs> I hope we're getting a cake for you today, Keith, in there. I, I hope there's some donuts coming in. They haven't asked me to come in Friday, but I'm sure they will. Hopefully. <laughs> How are you and Fiona the... The last couple of weeks have been hectic, the Interpros, and have you had time to reflect on the final? Yeah, probably haven't had the heart to look back at it yet. Um, I I was absolutely gutted, um, gutted for the team as well. But look, that's just the way it goes. Um, I'm just about recovered now, so I have to go straight into coaching new elbows because our first match kicks off in a, in a couple of weeks in um in the AIL. So I can't. I didn't have too long to feel too sorry for myself. So I'm slowly trying to get back into that and and reviewing a bit of a bits from uh, the I suppose from the interpros we have a lot of the girls similar with bows so just looking at a couple of things that we might need to to work on in the opener of the season because we're away to to black rock to kick it off so that's going to be a tough one yeah it'll be tough with it there's always going to be a target on your back now isn't there as well I know and that's and that was my whole team for last year I looked at that Rocky team and how were the underdogs and we're we're down in little old Limerick and and nobody's looking at us um so I'm gonna have to probably rejig that up a bit this year and um look we know that and we were we were superb the girls were unbelievable last year we won the the cup as well the OIL cup so it's there's going to be a lot of teams coming after that but look I suppose from last year we, we really enjoyed our rugby and we hope to kind continue it and hopefully we've a couple of new players that have, have come in on duel as well from clubs around young players that have kind of been making the step up to Munster so I'm looking forward for them to become in part of the team and embed them in as well. Yeah and that's important isn't it to have that pathway from club to province and then obviously on to international. Yeah, and that's it. And it, it's it's very clear now, I suppose, in the season structure because you see the interpros took place over the the summer. Um, the AIL will kick in now, and obviously the girls from Ireland point of view will go to WXV. So anyone spotted in the interpros um, will go up to that squad and have a go. And from the AIL last year as well, they'll be looked at going into to the in, interpro teams like Munster, Leinster, Connacht, and Ulster. So there is a a clear kind of path way and you know what you have to do and how you need to perform I suppose to be picked to get up into that environment and given a shot up there yeah the WXV is is the big one for the internationals but the small matter of playing Australia in Belfast this weekend which we now know is going to be broadcast on TG Car as well if anyone wants to watch it or obviously go down to the game but this is a, a very important few weeks for the international team obviously Scott Beeman had his first six nations last season and you know, we know where the the team was coming from, and you know, we said it's going to be uh, something that has to improve bit by bit. But there was signs during the Six Nations that things were definitely getting better. But now it's, you know, you're you're going up against the world champions in a few weeks. You're playing the number five ranked team in the in the mm. world this weekend. So we're going to find out exactly where this team is at, aren't we? Yeah, and look, I was looking at the rankings and obviously Australia are fifth, but I think uh, the top four, there's very clear there. You can see that um, Australia are actually in WXV2 um, because they, they lost all their games in that Pacific four. So they lost the USA, Canada and New Zealand, which would be, you know, three high class teams. But I, I really feel this game against Australia will give us a sense of where these girls are. I, I think from five down the rankings, maybe to 10, there's very tiny margins and it's close gaps so it's the performance they'll be looking at and seeing how they do it out there and to be fair to Australia they're they're a really good side but they'll be disappointed in how they performed in that Pacific Four so they'll be looking to change that and they, they didn't want to be in WXV2 so I think it's it's a good chance for the girls depending on if Scott is going to try out a couple of players or whether he's going to put out his strongest team but I really feel like they, they can take this Australian team I've seen such growth in the players and you can see from being in that high performance environment say some of them for the last year there's a clear difference and I especially saw it during the interpros with some of those players absolutely standing out um, miles above some yeah and when you say the the improvements you're talking about skill set strength and conditioning 
Yeah, spot on. Uh, strength and conditioning is huge. Um, just even fitness, match fitness in that Interpro, you can see it's it's four games, one after the other every weekend. You wouldn't even have that in AIL because there is, it's probably three games and then a week off. So it's it's that fitness come game four. You can see the the difference, I suppose, some some players that have work and, and different areas going on, college, different things. By the time game four comes, they're probably um, struggle to get up to that high performance um, uh, and being able to play at that high level. Now, not all players, but you can definitely see it. And I think the strength and conditioning and skill set even from coaching with Munster and um, the the past interpros, the likes of Connacht, Ulster, Leinster, Munster, they, the skill set, the, the games on show, it's getting tighter and tighter. You know, it used to be, I suppose, Munster, Leinster, um, uh, Connacht have won a, a few uh, games. You know, they've beaten Leinster, but in general, in the in the in the kind of final top two, it's generally Munster, Leinster. But that gap is closing as well, and it's because these players are are bringing their teammates along with them. Yes, so it's interesting. The obviously Dorothy Wall moved to Exeter if away for who was in the Six Nations team of the tournament opted to stay in Ireland, and you'd be facing her when you go up against Blackrock College. But you know there is an option to do both now. I mean, it's uh, one thing about going over to a club like Exeter. Dorothy is going to be going up against some of the best players around. Course. Yeah, and I think I think it's brilliant. I suppose um, with the AIL, um, I'll be honest with you. We like Dorothy wasn't released last year, so we didn't see a lot of her in the AIL. Um, if away for she was injured, we didn't see her. So I think when they go, when these girls go over to the Premiership, they're going to be playing. They're in that high performance, but they're playing week in week out. They are pulled, I suppose, when they go back to Ireland for the Six Nations. But um, even with the Celtic Cups, these girls aren't released to. To, to play with um, the Clovers or, or other teams. So I think, I suppose they wanted to go over, get game time. And let's be honest, the Premiership is the best league over in, in the whole world at the minute, even watching the standards. A lot of foreign players are going over. You, there's some Australians over there, a lot of USA, Canadian um, players go over there and play. Um, so it, it is high class. And I think it's it's interesting that I suppose these players are making that decision as well to, to go over and, and be embedded into that full-time environment especially having been in a full-time environment in Ireland as well yeah Fiona I just wanted to ask you I was reading up on you a little bit and you were I, one of your quotes were that the monster job is really really stressful but very enjoyable and I've I've only just dipped me toe into the into the water of coaching and some of the stuff that has popped up with the with the things you just do not learn on paper or on your coaching badges so what is the most stressful thing you've uh, you know outside of the norm of the tactics and the gym sessions what's the most stressful and the most enjoyment element of it for you Oh, God, stressful. I was just going to say, don't do it, Keith. Don't, <laughs> don't dip your toe anywhere near us. No, I'm only joking. Um, I suppose stressful in a way that um, you're kind of the lead and... Um, I'd have maybe four or five different coaches. I'd have S and C, um, couple S and C coaches. You've got physios. You've got um, attack, defense coach, different areas, and it's it's trying to make everyone happy when you're looking at a session plan, even something as small as that. Um, players could be pulled just post season or just sorry post session. You have numbers down on paper. Um, then you have a team environment. You know that Keith as well from playing it. Not everybody uh, is uh, best of pals all the time. So it's trying to make sure that uh, when we're playing, when we're training, that everyone is enjoying it, happy. And I suppose as as the head coach, you're in charge of that area and dealing with the personal side of things a, a bit more than you would be as an assistant coach. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to switch off when you go home. But one thing that's just popped up, do you remember your international debut? I do. It was against England. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading it. We actually beat England. So it'd be a nice little thing because obviously we got pumped by them last week in the football. But it'd be nice just to remind everybody that we're actually not bad at the rugby. Do you remember much of your, your debut against the English? 
I do. I actually, I, re I remember it well because it was, I came on to a scrum. So I, I think there was about maybe 18 minutes left. Um, and I was behind Fiona Coughlin. She was the captain. I would have played with her at club anyway. So um, I, they never liked to take her off the pitch. So I wasn't expecting to come on at all. So when they called my name, I was like, good God. And, I, you know, you had this fear about England. And I always remember just walking on, hitting that scrum. I think it could have been against Rocky Clark, who, who was a, an English prop legend and um, I said to myself holy god this is actually grand this no water at all I'm well able for this so the fear just went out and I, I continued about my business I think I got a, a turnover or two as well which I was delighted with Yeah England have obviously they're at a different level at the moment in terms of the WXV1 that's on in Canada in a few weeks you mentioned the fact that Australia played New Zealand Canada USA the exact group we have is there a concern that you look at the Wales situation last season where they they were in that top tier, it didn't go very well for them and it kind of fed into the, the Six Nations? Is there a worry that maybe something like that could happen with us? But, but then again, you um, want to be playing the best. Yeah, look, you want to be playing with them. Um, I personally think if I was coaching, I'd be tired in that USA game. Yes, they have beaten us well in the past, but... Um, I suppose in watching USA teams over over the last few years, it's it's their fitness, it's it's the fact that they're full time that stands to them. And now we have a lot of players. There's sevens players embedded in into this squad as well going forward. Really good ones. Um, so I think there's going to be a great mix. Um, the the fitness levels are going to be through the roof when we watch, and the skill set obviously is 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 getting better and better. So I think if they can look at that USA game really target it. I, I suppose you, you wouldn't want to be saying I, I wouldn't focus on anything else, but I wouldn't be looking so much at New Zealand and Canada. As I said, I feel like at the minute, the top four are, are, are a good bit ahead of everyone else. But you, you also want to be able to go out and look at your own performance. So with those games, I'd be focusing in on, on what we need to do really well. But I'd be having a great crack at the USA, I think. Yeah, and you were talking there with Keith about, you know, as a as a head coach, making sure you get the, the right team around you. And Scott Beeman is... He's been forced to change things up a little bit. Obviously, Declan Danaher is no longer there, but Hugh Hogan has, has come in and Garrett Steenson is there as well as Alex Codling. So the the signs are good that when Scott Beeman was appointed, you know, this was seen as a bit of a coup to, to get somebody of that calibre. And, you know, he, he's continued to set the standards high and you can see that by the, the coaching team that he's brought in. Yeah, and that's it. When you are coaching, you want to be able to bring in, um, I suppose, your own coaches with you. You're relaxed around them. You know them inside out. And these are probably guys he's he's maybe worked with, a couple of them down the line. Um, Declan Danner, I thought, uh, did defence. I was impressed with you in the Six Nations. I was really impressed in how the defence and how the, the line speed had changed a, a bit from the previous Six Nations. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's, what they're going to do defence-wise and if he's, if you if you Hogan's going to change up anything in that in particular okay well Fiona Hayes thank you very much and uh, enjoy that birthday in a few days time <laughs> cheers are you going to send down some donuts I oh yeah yeah we'll uh, <laughs> yeah we'll share them out between yourself and Keith cheers lads